welcome everybody and I'm very happy to see our faces today and uh, I'm always thankful for all of our members here it's because I know that you all of you here are praying for our children's and also our next generations and also our future church officers and the future generation for missions. Um, uh, 우리 랩런트 희나야 그 자리를 잡으면 돼. 여기 자리도 있고 여기 앞에 자리 있고 자리 앉으면 돼. 옆에 앉으면 불편하니까 좀 이렇게 주연이 옆에 주성아 정수 정수 주연이 옆에 앉고 어. 희나도 여기 여기 두 자리가 있거든. 이쪽 앞으로 앉으면 될것 같아. 오케이. 이게 상당히 그 자리가 진짜 불편합니다. That seat is very uncomfortable. So I hope that today, let's enjoy worship today. Uh, today's title is Caleb and Joshua and those to enjoy the covenant. Also, they knew what they should be 24 hours. Yes, yesterday, uh, last week, uh, we were talking about Moses and Moses' mom, right? Which is Jochebed. Jochebed, the name means what? Glory to God. Glory is God. So today we will look at Caleb and Joshua and also Rahab who helped Caleb and Joshua when they enter the land of Canaan. So we will look at this today. But before that, uh, we want to share first our main service, which is very important for us. Uh, everybody that are here, we need to understand that all messages connect to our main service. Because we are one church. One body in Christ, right? I try to be more simple today and try to be more, uh, uh, let's say, summarized so we can really take this today and live with this throughout week. So the first thing is the title. What's the title of today? God gave us this title. A Royal Evangelist. A Royal Evangelist to save 237 nations. What is 237 nations? Just think about this. The whole wide world. 237 nations, if you look at it in the Korean uh, information, they say that there's 237 nations. They actually can connect and have bank account, bank services. So this is 237 nations. But what does that really mean? What does that role your evangelist to save the nation? First of all, Korea, we are in a time to have our voting for a new president. Sadly, I am not able to vote. Are you able to vote? No. So, uh, some of you guys are underage, so you guys cannot vote. Only Korean citizenship, I think you guys are able to vote. I don't know about um, wives that are married to Korean citizen. Do you vote? If you can vote, right? Okay, I don't have citizenship, so I cannot vote. But uh, depending of what leader is raised, and depending on what this leader is thinking, is the outcome of that nation. And from this, we must ask ourselves, what kind of leader do we want? Do we want a leader that solves our economy problems? Or maybe our government problems? Or maybe poverty? So many things we want to solve, right? But depending on what leader is raised will change also the spiritual environment, the spiritual world, the spiritual system. 
So what leader is raised is so important for this time. One more thing I want to share is that if you look at the world history, all leaders, good or bad, they have raised one thing in common. What is that? War. War can be with guns, but war also can be with ideology. War. So, what leader do we really need? Today, God told us in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14 to 20. What kind of king do we need? Right? What kind of king do you want? So this is everything. So that's why God gave Israel people, Israel, before they go to Canaan, Deuteronomy chapter 17, 15 to 17. Because God said to the Israel people, if you go to Canaan, you will look and you will find the same thing you used to see in Egypt. So Israel came out from where? From Egypt. But when they go to Canaan, what are they going to meet? The things that they saw in Egypt. So God is telling them, before they go to Canaan, what kind of king do you need? First of all, it says, you need a king raised by who? But God. Second, you need a king that is raised by God, but not from a neighbor house, but from your brothers. I'm not saying that all your brothers should be kings only. I'm saying those who have the covenant must be raised as a king. Not just our neighbor because they have more skills, they have more money, they have more powers. What else he says? He says, you should not make or raise a lot of horses. What, the, what horses define? War. How much strong, how, how strong you are. And also, it says, you should not bring or, nor have many wives. In that time, having a lot of wives was very common. And it says, you should not raise a king that will return to the things that they used to do in Egypt. So how important is a king? So why God is telling us all of this? Because at the end of the day, we want to trust these things, not God. That's why God is telling us in detail, don't race, don't have so many horses, don't raise a king from your neighbors, don't raise things or do things that will make you return to Egypt. God is so detailed, right? In everything, not every aspect. But how can we recognize that? If we listen and hear the word. So the first point is what? We need a true king. Who is the true king? Am I the true king? No. Can I be a king? Maybe. Do you know that if you go to an island in Panama, there's a lot of isolated islands. Nobody is living there. If you go there and you put yourself there and you say, this is my island, I am the king of the island. I think, I don't know in Philippines, there's a lot of islands, right? Do you, do you still have that kind of battle in the very tribal people? Probably, right? But when I was in Panama, the indigenous tribes, there's, they have a lot of islands, small, big, medium size. If, there, if there's no one living there, if you go there and you say, this is my island, you become the king of the island. But this is not that kind of king, right? What true king do we need? Not only for Israel, for us. The first 
thing that we must remember is God has promised us from the beginning, before we were born, a true king. And this is who? Christ. Second, not only he has given us true freedom from Egypt, but through his true king, as a true king, he has shed his blood and freed us from what? From Egypt. In other words, from the hand of Satan. What else? God promised us in Isaiah 7.14 that he would send a son, born from a virgin, and you should call him Emmanuel. In this time, there were what? What kind of time they were living? Captivity. They were captive by Babylon. So God is giving us what is the true answer with the true king. Fourth, not only he has finished giving us this blessing, Isaiah chapter 53, 1, 6, and Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. In this time of crisis, problems, conflicts, divisions, God promised us a true king. And who is that? Jesus as the Christ. You hear that Jesus is the Christ and you might say, Amen. Some of you will say, I know that. And some of you will say, what is that? But Jesus is our Savior. Right? Christ is the work he had fulfilled. For who? For me. That's what salvation is personal. We sometimes say, how he needs salvation. No, first, you need salvation. And from that, what happens? Life comes. But what kind of life? True life. So those who have me, those who have accepted me, believe that you are what? My son. You are, your, you are his children. How many of you here believe that Jesus is the Christ. I can say Jesus is the Christ hundred times and I still believe that he is the Christ. Even though I say it thousand more times, I believe that Jesus is still the Christ because it's not by my effort that I understood who is Christ. It is by the Holy Spirit giving me what? The grace, the faith to confess what? That Jesus is my Christ. So repeating the same thing is not repeating, actually. It's actually confessing. That's what I always say. You don't repeat the gospel. You confess and preach the gospel. It's very different, right? So this is the first point. We need a true king, and who is that? Jesus. Because he is the Christ. Do you think that we, sti we still are in slavery? Do you think that we are still colonized? Do you really think we are still captives? Are you slave to someone? Are you slave to someone? No. I am not slave to anyone, right? Sometimes we think when, when I was younger, I thought I was slave from my parents, right? Because my parents were controlling my life. But actually, that's not actually slavery. You know what's the worst thing, worst slavery that you can have? Of course, there could be physical slavery. But many people are slaver, have slavery to themselves. I am slave to myself. What does that mean? I want this. I want to fulfill this. I want to gain this. But what if you cannot have it? You will do everything you can to have it. But at the end of the day, reality tells you, you don't have everything you want, actually. The world tells you that if you make an effort, you can do it. But that's actually what? Being slave to yourself. So many people are slave to money, success, honor. But why? Because someone is telling them, hey, you should be that? No, because I want to be that. So actually it comes from where? 
Genesis chapter 3. The moment we're separated from God, we think that we can live without God. We think that our efforts and our experiences can lead us to some God. All human beings, even though atheists, believe that there's a superpower, there's a supernatural, someone stronger than me. Or some of them tell us, says this, I am God. Have you ever seen, have you heard those kind of things? Nowadays, many people say that I am God. I am Jesus. But because they're slave to themselves. What do I, what are we captive now right now? Genesis chapter 6. You're meant to make money. You're meant to have success. You're meant to have more physical things. Why? Because the world is telling you Genesis chapter 6. Live without God. Success without God. Have everything without God. What else? Genesis chapter 11. What, we are, what are we captive at? The things of this world. I'm not saying that the things of this world is not needed. Hey, if I had a good car, then I can get there faster. Right? If I have a better car, my body doesn't get so wasted. Yesterday I went to, uh, to Yewen Church and we went from the, I was in the bus and the bus is pretty old, right? So four hours just going. Well, it's not my, it, it's, I, don't, I cannot say this in front of all the people that me, but I, my back was killing me. You know, having a better car, it makes you more comfortable, get there more, better, healthier, right? But what am I saying is that if you're just Center, if your life revolves around only this, I can tell you, that's not success. That's not true happiness. Last week I told you, me, myself, I thought that I'm nothing. I'm actually nothing, right? My name is John. My, my position is assistant pastor. If I go outside the world, this thing is nothing. But that nothing takes me to what? To everything. You know what's everything for me? Christ. And then my, my life is so, happy, my, so simple. I feel happy. If you ask me today, are you happy? I, I tell you, yes, I am happy. Why? Because from nothing, I have gained everything. And this is the spiritual things. And I want you to really enjoy this. How? How can you really enjoy this? The only way is to keep listening to the word and keep enjoying the works of God within prayer, worship, pray, uh, and also uh, praise. So that's why worship is so important for us. Christ is our true king. Christ is our king because our problem of this world is spiritual problem. In John chapter 16 and John chapter 12, verse 31 says, Satan is the ruler of this world. So your battle is against who? Your neighbor? Your friend? The bad people? No. It says, the fight that you must have is with the ruler of this world. And who is him? Satan. Devil. Evil spirits. Uh, in my life, I will tell you this. In my life, I would, I've never seen demons. Have you ever seen demons in your life? Have you ever seen evil spirits while you're sleeping? Have you ever seen those kind of things? I've never seen. But I don't need to see to believe. Why? Because in the Bible says, this evil spirits does exist and their work. To what? To destroy humanity and this world. 
So that's the clear evidence. When people say that this doesn't exist, but if you see the outcome now of our earth, our society, everything you see is what? Destruction. Curses. Problems. If I ask you, give me one country that does not have a problem. Every country has a problem. Why? Because this individual exists. And this is not limited neither by time, neither by space. So your fight is what? Against this. That's why you need a true king. To rule over you, rule over your family, and rule over the church. That's the only way to really have this battle. Third point. You are called as a royal priesthood. Do you believe that? If I tell you today, you are royal priesthood, do you believe that? Some of you will say, I don't, I don't think I'm royal priesthood. Then I will tell you, when you go to heaven, you realize that you were royal priesthood. But I'm saying, before you go to heaven, if you really enjoy this, what kind of thing comes out is you start having what? Assurance. Assurance means even though I don't see, even though I cannot see it, I believe it. Why? Because God has given me this grace. That's what we call assurance. If you have assurance, then you start to pray. Then you start to worship. It's nothing very hard, really. The most basic thing is what? We need a true king in our life. Everybody would say, every president says, I am the one that can solve your problem. And you vote for him, let's say. And at the end of the day, the problem is the same thing. The problem of this world will never end, okay? Will never end. But if you have a problem, you have an answer inside there because you have the gospel. If you have a problem as an unbeliever, then that problem will take you to destruction. That's why nowadays uh, there's a writer that wrote Hyun Moon, Hyun Tap, which is in the field, there's problems. And in the field, there's answers. 현장에 문제가 있고, 그러나 현장에는 답이 있다. Even unbelievers, they see the field like that. But us, we don't finish with, okay, I know the problem, I have the answer. We know what is the true answer for this spiritual problem. This year, tomorrow, you have lunar year. And I wish that our, our friends here also, I hope that uh, I know that your environment in your family is not the best one. I know it. Right? My environment was not the best one also. But I am telling you, one person is enough. If I ask you today, if you go to a black pitch place, very dark place, but you have one switch to turn on the light. If you turn it on, what happens to that very dark place? Even in 0 0.1 second, this place is lightened. That's how you are. You're the light. If you're in that family and you're the light, indirectly, you're shining this light and you're changing the people around you. And you can ask yourself, but still my problems are this, the same. I don't change. I'm telling you, don't be so hasty. Just wait a little bit more and listen to the word and hold on to the word and pray with the word. And you see one day, you see the, how God has given you the answer. Because God wants you to give you what? Not horses, not the things of this world, not the things that you, should, you could call back to what you used to do. He wants to give you a true king to you. So just be a little bit patient. 
Do you know, do you know many people that have, uh, they do sports, the Olympians and not Olympians, the difference is they're so close to finish, but they give up. That's the difference being Olympian and not Olympian, Olympic athlete. But I'm not saying that we should be like super athletes and be like super powerful believers that never, nothing, problems happens. No. When you face problems, it's a time to renewal. When you face conflicts, it's time to really change our thoughts. And when you face crisis, it's time to what? Challenge with the word of God. I know today I'm talking about many things. Let's go fast with Caleb and Joshua and also Rahab. Uh, I just mentioned to you, when you face problem, just think this way. God, what is your plan? You know, it's so obvious that when you're facing a big problem, even though you ask God, what is your plan? You're still thinking, this problem is so difficult, right? But if you have asked God, what is his plan? One day, God, through his word, a God, through his meetings that he gives you, he gives you the answer. And that's how, I don't know, it's so so. So I don't know how to explain it. I can't even not explain to you how God gives me the answer. But if you remain in his word, God will show you his plan. Second, we talked about Rahab here, right? Uh, who is Rahab? You know who is Rahab? Rahab was actually a prostitute that lived in Canaan. When Joshua and Caleb came and also the spies came, she hid him. And why did Rahab hit Joshua and Caleb and the Israel people? Why? Because she heard what happened in Exodus. I'm telling you, if you only hear the word, you have hope. She didn't see it, right? She didn't know who were, who were those amazing person that crossed the Red Sea, the Jordan, and came out from this amazing Egypt place. She didn't know who it is, but she heard. You heard the covenant. And she heard the covenant, and now she was included in the, in the genealogy of who? Of Christ. Right? So she was used for this covenant. So if you heard the covenant, you will be used for this covenant. You need to really hold on to that. That's the only hope we have, really. Third, Joshua, where's Joshua today? Okay. And Caleb. Sooner, where's Daniel today? Okay, it's over there. Next week probably is Daniel. Oh no, it's Samuel. Uh, Joshua and Caleb. Do you know what they do? What they did? They saw what God did with Moses. Rahab heard. Joshua and Caleb saw. And what happened to them at the end of the day? They entered the land of Canaan. And what is the land of Canaan? The fulfillment of Christ. So you have the fulfillment of Christ in your life. Through who? Through Christ. You have accepted Christ in your heart. This blessing has taken place in your life. So for our remnants, we have so many remnants here. I feel like sometimes when I finish, I feel like, ah, they understand? Was I too difficult? 
This is the thinking always, I, I always the thoughts I have whenever I share. But I always tell God, God, please, you move the heart of our remnants. Actually, I please plead God, please move the hearts of our remnants. Also, move the hearts of our church officers. Move the hearts of our moms to do what? To do the remnant movement. And to conclude today's word, you are work. You are walking in a journey. What kind of journey are you walking? Covenant journey. Last year, we talked about covenant journey the whole year, the whole week, right? Why? Because now with this covenant journey, now we need to go inside what? 24 hours. Remember, 24 hours doesn't mean you don't eat, you don't sleep, you don't do nothing. 24 hours mean what you have in you is 24 hours. So, uh, just to finish today's uh, worship, I barely really talk about many things. I think this is the place I talk more about things, about my life, about the meetings. But if you meet me outside, I really don't talk about too much. But, uh, you know, today our, uh, our friends came here, Alex and... I forgot, Bogun? Bogun? Huh? Kwon Min. So he's, he's meditating deeply. And we have Dominic and we have Chu Han and Alex. Do you know these guys? Do you know them? Look at, just look at them, you know. They're so handsome. So beautiful for me. Yeah, I don't know. I see them beautiful. Even though they can be a little bit nasty, you know. There's, they're, you know they're teenagers. But um, even though I don't show the happiness and the joy to see you guys, but I really, 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 I'm really happy to see you here. Uh, many people have a lot of, uh, how do you say this, 평경. Many people have their estimation about our remnants. I don't have it. You know why? Because I see this moment. And I see hope. That's the only thing I see. If I see this moment, I know God has control of them. Even though they can do whatever they want in their life, they cannot come out from the hands of God. So I really, really, from my bottom of my heart, I really love you guys. Okay, I'm not being, you know, confessing like, like this, but I really love you guys. But remember, the journey that you guys are walking right now it's not done. You start with this now, and you will be guided continuously. Never give up on what God has given to you in the beginning. And to end, last week, what did they do? They went to Seoul, and they did camp. Camp 라고 왔어요 우리 친구들이. 근데 왔어 오늘. This is what I say always, remnant will do remnant movement at the end. And this is real thing. So now our kids are here, right? Just, just imagine, dream, what remnant movement they would do. Are you not happy? Are you not feeling like excited? I feel excited. Okay? So... I always just, they want to do that, they, okay, do it. You want to do, okay, do it. But I always say, you're in this covenant journey. So I want you to really enjoy this. I'm really happy to see my family back here too. So we can keep praying for them and keep reminding that our ministry is not just for us. It's for the whole 237 nations. Let's pray. 
And let's finish with our Lord's Prayer. 우리 기도하고 우리 주님의 기도로 마치겠습니다. God, thank you for giving us today. Let us enjoy the blessings of worship. Let us have also the joy within this covenant. God, also thank you for giving us the meetings that you have allowed today so we can share and also be joyful that you are in control of everything. Heal, give them the strength, renew them, restore them in every part they need so they can have the strength to listen to your word and gain the blessings that you have given them already. Fulfill the works of, on them and giving them the filling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, our, in your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much uh, for just a quick...